to film or not to film? That is the question on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino. Like thousands of young people across the country who leave home for the Golden State, I came to California to be in the film business. But every day we read about runaway productions leaving California for other states. Folks, Hollywood is part of the fabric and folklore of our great state. How do we keep what we have here and how do we bring back what we've lost? Film and TV productions are a source of great middle class jobs and a boon to our economy. With us today are two industry leaders fighting to keep those jobs in California. Let's ask the question. question is with Anthony Portentino. On the question is today, we are going to talk about the film and television industry, a central part of the California economy. With me today, I have the director, the executive director of the California Film Commission, Amy Lemish, and we have Ed Brown, who is the business agent for Local 44 of IATSE, which are the prop masters and craft service. Mr. Brown, tell us, everybody thinks it's Hollywood and it's the, the the agents, the stars, the executives, but we're talking about thousands of rank-and-file men and women who make their living in this industry. Could you talk a, bit, a little bit about absolutely. that? Absolutely. Um, you're absolutely correct. When people think about Hollywood, and this is not just within the U.S., but around the globe, when people think about Hollywood, they think about red carpets, they think about um, glamorous you know, Hollywood champagne parties and so on. That's all that they really see. Uh, really, the people that are behind the camera, the below the line workers, the people that make it all work, are much of like the people that, that I represent. I represent uh, so I prop masters, all your construction trades, special effects, all your property crafts, set decorators. Uh, the prop makers that I, that I represent are, total com are completely blue collar workers. These are people that get up at four o'clock in the morning, put on 30 pounds of tools, kiss their family goodbye, while their family is still sleeping, stand on their feet 12 to 14 hours a day on concrete stage floors, come home after a hard day's work to their family that has now gone to sleep again. Um, these are, this is truly hard labor. These are people that you don't see uh, on, on red carpets. Middle class jobs. Absolutely. Middle class jobs with health care benefits, the kind of jobs that every politician talks about wanting to have in their state and in their in their neighborhood, right? Absolutely. And that's the problem because we have other states that are stealing our middle class jobs. We've experienced, I'd say, uh, over the last decade at least, uh, a drop in the retention of, of industry jobs within the state of California because of the aggressive uh, stance by other states and other countries uh, to basically steal our work, to steal our jobs. Steal our infrastructure. Absolutely. Amy, do you want to tell us about what a couple other states are doing in that, in that vein? Sure. Uh, we've, he's right. We've been experienced over the past decade, or actually a little bit before that, um, the phenomenon of productions leaving California to go to other regions to film. And the primary reason that they go to these other regions to film is because there are financial incentives um, that they can take advantage of by leaving. It started in Canada, and then starting in about 2003, it, um, it spread to the, the U.S. state by state to the point where now we have 40 states in the country that are offering incentives to lure productions to their regions. So for instance, um, New York is a big competitor of ours. They uh, were bragging about the record level of television production that they now have there. Um, they're, it's just through the roof. They don't have enough stage space available. Everybody's working. Louisiana, believe it or not, is probably the number three region in the U.S. right now. They started out with a nominal amount of production spending there back in 2003 when they started their program. And in 2012, they topped over $700 million in production spending. Georgia last year topped over $800 million in production and Georgia's spending. Georgia's going to be up in the ante even more. Aren't they building some more studios and doing some? Yeah, that's the other <coughs> uh, risk that, that, that I always worry about that we face here is the 
growth of in infrastructure that our competitors have where they're building uh, multi-stage uh, studio facilities, which Georgia already has some, and Pinewood Studios out of the UK is coming in to build a multi-studio complex in Atlanta. Uh, it's happening all over the country. Right, so Pinewood Studios, a historically important production facility, isn't choosing California to build its stages, it's choosing Georgia. That's, that's correct. That's unconscionable. Um, Ed, uh, Amy talked about the infrastructure. You know, it used to be that your members would go on location. Correct. Now they're m going on location and staying and moving. There's, I would say right now, as far as my local is concerned, we have 6,000 uh, members of our, of our local. Uh, if you expand that to the West Coast, IATSC, there's about 40,000 uh, people that are uh, participating in all the locals. Of the 6,000 members that I represent, I've got hundreds of them literally on location all around the country, all around the globe, and a complete migration of my members who are Southern California residents, residents of, of LA, right. who call me all the time because they're on a distant location in Chicago, in Atlanta, and they want to stay because that's where the work's at. So we've got, we have LA residents that are just picking up and following the work. We used to use a lot of times a, uh, as a joke the fact that the industry was made up of, of a bunch of carnies, that we were all a bunch of carnival workers. Well, it's not a joke anymore because we are turning into carnies. We now travel wherever the work goes. Families are split apart. Right. We hear about you know um, divorces, um, mortgage implosion, cars repossessed. This is, uh, it's really criminal that the state is allowing uh, all of these jobs to flee from within our borders. Now with that, uh, we did have a little bit of good news in California. We did pass uh, a tax incentive program, and Amy, you uh, administer that program on behalf of the Governor's Office and the California Film Commission. Could you tell us what we've done mm -hmm. so far? And I mean, it seems like economically we're talking about a uh, $600 million investment that's returning a $4 billion return on that investment. So it's a, it's a successful use of the state's resources. Right. So in response to years and years and years of this, uh, you know, intense competition of productions leaving, uh, the state legislature did pass uh, our own incentive in California in 2009. And the California Film Commission administers that program, which we started in July of that year. And it's an enormous success for the lucky few. Right. So there is such high demand for the program right. that we actually conduct a lottery. On the first day of the fiscal year that we accept applications, we do a lottery system because there is overwhelming demand. So for instance, this year we had a record 380 applications of different projects hoping to film in California, submitting an application, and we have enough credits to accommodate about 45 on average per year. So the rest of them go on this massive waiting list and they're, you know, hoping that, th that their number will get called up. But it's, we have very, very high demand, needless to say. The program, what I was saying is, it's successful for those that do get in and we are able to quantify what their spending is. So mm -hmm. for instance, we have $100 million to allocate each fiscal year. So for every $100 million, it's about, it's about $800 million in production spending. That, these are all direct numbers. I'm not using any multipliers. This is right. what they're spending at vendors and payroll and rentals and that sort of thing. Food. And about, oh, a lot of food and equipment and truck rentals and that sort I'm of thing. I'm always concerned about food. <laughs> you know, I have to, you know, I am Italian and I, <laughs> I'm not skinny, so food's important. And about, of that number, $250 million of that is just in payroll to, right. you know, his members. So it's, it's very successful to the, to the extent that we're able to accommodate productions that would like to be here. Now, you talked about those numbers not including the multipliers, but when we actually look at overall economic benefit, the numbers are even better. Sure, sure. Um, I mean, you've got well, some there of those was Well, there was a study that was done um, back in 2011 that analyzed the first two years of the program, and they determined in looking at, at, at the numbers that for every dollar in tax credit that is given out, that uh, that we get back a dollar thirteen in state and local tax revenues. So it's an investment that makes the state money. Tax revenue. Tax revenue. That's correct. But yet efforts to extend it and expand it have not always been well received. 
That's correct. That's correct. There have been, well, there have been ap several efforts since the program started in 2009 to, because it was originally enacted as a five-year program, and productions need certainty that, that the program is going to be there several years into the future for them to be able to do their production planning and really count on a program being there. So there have been several efforts to extend the program for an additional five years, and it's kind of been little steps. There was a one-year extension, and, and then there was a two-year extension, so it's been extended for a total of three years at this point. And Ed, the Milken study, which you've read Correct. On, on analyzing the program, some of the statistics that have come out of that on expanding and instability. Do you want to touch upon some of those? I think, you know, the, the, the Milken Institute did uh, a study uh, which showed economic growth in the states that um, have these tax incentive programs. And it's startling to see, for instance, you know, New York comes immediately to mind on the, on the benefits that are being reaped within the state of New York. Uh, Milken has proved through their study the Erst and Young study was also done, which also proved that the program works. Um, yet there are those people that have uh, poo-pooed those studies and said that they were skewed and that they were not, you know, not correct. I personally do not understand why they would say that. The numbers don't lie. The figures are there. When the, when the program was instituted in 2009, I started tracking the number of jobs that were created because for me, as a union leader, it's all about creating jobs for the members I represent. 2009, there were 1,200 members of my local that worked on tax incentive shows right away. Those are oh. 1,200 people who would have otherwise sat at home. Now, if you take that and multiply that, if that number would have stayed static, which it's not, if uh, you multiplied that by the four or five years that the program has been around, well, there's another five to 6,000 jobs that have been created. Imagine what we could have if we had a more lucrative program and competed on a level playing field with some of these other states. And again, those are jobs with health care benefits. Correct. That support a family. Correct. Middle class jobs. Right. That are also part of the fabric of California. Exactly. Because we're not talking about a new industry. No. We're talking about part of the Golden State's infrastructure. This is, the, the film and television industry is pretty much the last indigenous industry in the state of California that's left. We all know what, what we've lost, aerospace, et cetera, the automobile industry. Right. We have to hold on to this industry because it is the foundation of, uh, of you know, the job and just infrastructure in California. Tourism is one of the, the biggest uh, revenue drivers uh, throughout the state. We're not talking just Los Angeles. I mean, all the way up to the Golden Gate Bridge. Tourism is is you know a major revenue driver and a lot of people come from all over around all over the world for film and television now one of the biases out there is that it's a benefit for Los Angeles only but as you know right and Amy you know we film all over the state of California right. um, how do we get people to understand throughout California that isn't this isn't an LA issue this is a California issue Want me to take that? Go ahead. Um, I, I, I am asked that question a lot. And first of all, there's a lot of production in the LA area, but there's production all over the state. And historically, there used to be more production all over the state. What's really probably been hurt most is um, location filming outside of LA, because where we used to do westerns in Bakersfield and Fresno, They'll go to New Mexico to do a Western right. before they will go or to Arizona. Fresno. So that's really hurt the mm -hmm. productions going outside of the LA area to a great extent. But when I was talking about for every dollar the state get, uh, gets back a dollar thirteen in state and local tax revenues, those are tax revenues that go into the general fund. General fund to fund programs all over the state. Right. So one of the other, I wanted to make another point about the infrastructure, which um, you touched on. When he talks about members that have to travel out of state to make their livelihoods, they're the lucky few that get taken out of state. Because right. what we've been noticing is that when a production goes to, let's just, not to pick on Louisiana, but let's pick on Louisiana for a moment. The first couple years of their program, a lot of uh, members would be taken from Los Angeles. But for each shoot that not. comes back, fewer and fewer people, they want to hire only locals. So they're right. not bringing LA people for those jobs. So. The bottom line is other states are stealing our workforce, using them to train their local workforce, and not bringing those people back. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the production incentives. What can we do 
to make California more film friendly. People, including myself, I came here 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, to be in the film business. Are young people coming to this state anymore? We'll find out and we'll see what we're going to do on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino. Who needs this modern world? I can live just fine out here without the road rage and boy bands. Of course, I might miss my Charter HD with football on ESPN and Walking Dead on AMC. ESPN and AMC. And, well, Shark Week on Discovery HD, but that's all. AMC, ESPN, Discovery, TBS, and Comedy Central HD, but that's it. Except for HBO HD. Charter now has over 100 HD channels and more brilliant HD shows on demand than ever. We're back on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino. With me is Amy Lemish, who actually brought you A League of Their Own with Penny Marshall's production, and Ed Brown, who, you know, you were pretty in pink. You worked on that uh, film back when I was a young film watcher and bought my, I guess it was $4. I paid at the time. I was a young film worker. You were a young film worker, <laughs> and you were pretty in pink. We're talking about why it's important to film in California. We've got some successes. We've got some work to do. Amy, tell us about um, some of the recent successes of the program. Right. So one of the um, uh, types of productions that are eligible for our tax credit program are TV series that are on the air that are filming somewhere outside of California that wish to relocate back to California. We call that relocating TV series. So uh, last year we had a series that applied, they got in the program, and they moved the entire production from Atlanta, Georgia to LA. This is uh, it's called Teen Wolf. It's a very popular show for younger people, and, uh, <laughs> and but, but it's huge. Remember Michael they J. Shoot, Fox. Uh, but this is a show that shoots 24 episodes a season, and they yeah. will spend approximately $40 million in one TV season, employing hundreds and hundreds of people and using hundreds of vendors. So and it's a big success that, for we us. we brought that back to That's California. That's correct. That's correct. Right. They moved here because of the program. A lot of shows do apply. They, they would like to move back to California, but if they don't get in the program, we're not able to get no. them. Tell us about the accountability. I think... You know, one of the things that we fight is people don't understand tax incentives. They think it's somehow an expenditure. They don't see it as accountability. And frankly, they're right on some of them. I mean, right. there have been, the legislature has done a terrible job on some incentives where they put secret language into the bill where you don't know who gets the money. Right. You don't know what industry gets the money, these late night deals. But the entertainment tax credit is completely and totally different and accountable. Walk us through why this is special. Sure. Yeah, we run a very transparent program. And I think it is confusing for a lot of people how do these tax credits work. So the way our pro pro program works is when they initially apply and they get approved, they get really a reservation of tax credits. They get nothing from us except a piece of paper. Right. And then if they shoot their film and hire a crew and pay their workers and, and, and complete everything, they have to complete post-production and then go through a very, very detailed audit and we review that they've actually spent what they said they're going to spend and, and we can verify all of that. It's accountable. Then they actually will get a tax credit certificate that they can then file with the Franchise Tax Board when they file their tax return. So, uh, and then we share information with the Franchise Tax Board so there isn't any sort of fraud going on. And, um, and, and, and we, you know, provide information on what those projects are and how much they're spending and how much their tax credit uh, allocation was. So we, we try to be very transparent. Yeah, one of my frustrations when I was up in Sacramento was we had efforts to shine the light on other tax credits and those were always defeated. Here is the model citizen. Here is the one that is completely and totally accountable and transparent. Mm -hmm. But yet we still see opposition to this, to expanding it from them, those folks who think it's an expenditure and not focusing on um, on the, the revenue on the revenue mm -hmm. side. Ed, do you want to touch upon some of your advocacy efforts and how you're going around the state to try to get right. some political leaders outside of California right. to understand the the investment nature? I think um, you know one. We have to start with our uh, immediate communities. We have to start with the people that live around us and understand the industry. And we need to have, uh, the industry needs to have continued community support. Um, when a film company, a television company comes into your, your neighborhood, you should embrace it. These are you know, your neighbors, your friends you go to church with and play ball with. And understand that these are middle class jobs that keep the, the economy, not only in LA, but throughout the entire state, solid. Um, I have uh, I've gone to Sacramento. I've testified 
um, at the State Assembly a few different times. You know, we have continuous meeting with legislators to, to get them to understand that it's not solely uh, based in L.A. This is not an L.A. issue. And to right. go back to something that Amy said, this is all feeds into the uh, into the tax revenue pool of the entire of the entire state. Um, we're taking meetings all the time. I'm going up to Northern California later on this week, um, hoping for a more lucrative program as we move into the 2014 legislative session. I think that things are uh, a little more stable in the state. Right. I think that the opposition to this program is not as strong as it was, and I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll have success next year. And the independent think tanks, the, the folks who have reviewed the program, their recommendations are to expand it to more productions, to, to change some of the eligibility requirements that, over, that favor only productions of certain sizes, Correct. to expand it to uh, commercial production. I mean, all of the independent analysis is saying do more California. That's absolutely correct. And you mentioned at the, at the top of this segment that I did a, a, a big movie. You know, those kind of movies that I did uh, are not done here in California. They're done outside of California. And the job numbers that those movies create, right. there is, there's not an equality of what's going on. The kind of productions that we've got in California have a much smaller crew, much smaller number of jobs. The major productions that we see that are being done all around the, the country and all around the globe have 150, 200, right. 250 people working on that crew. Well, we've got, you know, the production. And they shoot for 100 days. Yeah, right. they do. Right, they do. versus two or three. That's correct. But the Milken Institute says look at all of it. Look at the commercial as well as the big productions and hit the whole market uh, with more incentives. That's correct. Mm -hmm. right. They recommend an expansion of the, of the program. We're currently at $100 million a year. Uh, I think, really, uh, from where I sit, uh, California needs to be on the same level playing field as New York. Right. These historically have been the production centers of the country, and uh, again, I'm cautiously optimistic that that's what's going to end up happening uh, come next year. Now, we've talked about the tax incentive, but obviously that's one piece of making a state film friendly and, and attracting some of these businesses back. There's some other things that we are doing or can be doing that you want to touch upon. Uh, um, yeah, sure. Uh, we do stuff all the time to make California film friendly. I mean, that's that's really what my office is here to do is to, you know, help productions that are here and make it easier for those that do want to shoot here. So we do all kinds of work w with local municipalities, federal agencies to try to streamline the permit process, get people to reduce fees. You can't take a month to make a decision if you're right. going to let somebody shoot there. You need to turn things around and three to five days. We also have a network of regional film offices. There's about 50 of them in California, all the way from Humboldt County down to Imperial County, who we, in my office, work very closely with coordinating and assisting productions. We just had a really big shoot. This was very, very rare, as Ed had mentioned. Uh, there was a film that came just for a week to film in California. The rest of the film is going to be in Atlanta, but uh, they were in Mendocino County doing all kinds of driving shots on our beautiful roads, you know, highlighting our scenery. And that was a huge amount of coordination with CHP and Caltrans and other, you know, local agencies to make that happen. Um, now, obviously, in L.A., there's a lot of talk about uh, creating a film czar, making more film-friendly um, rules and regulations are you interfacing with uh, the Los Angeles uh, mayor's office and and permit office? Mm -hmm. um, sure, I work very closely with Film LA, which is really the film office for the city and county of LA because we overlap a lot, so we have to coordinate, you know, very closely. And they've done enormous amount of work over the past eight to ten years right. to do just that, to make it really simple, streamline online permits, uh, reasonable fees. And the city's done quite a lot, you know, to try to follow the state's model. The state doesn't actually charge a, a site rental fee if right. you want to be at a state park or, or some other state property. And the city did follow suit uh, with allowing filming at some city properties without charging a fee, other than, you know, if you need a monitor or security guard or that sort of thing. So they've done quite a lot and we work very closely with them. I want to go back and touch upon something Ed said earlier. Um, years ago when I was scouting locations, I knocked on the door of a, uh, a woman who was in her 80s and she said, oh, I'm happy to have you because I want to make sure you stay here. 
She was, just a, she was just a, a retired lady who understood the importance of the industry and instinctively just said, yeah, use my, use my house. I love that lady. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually went back to her a couple times and she always said yes. That's she great. let us use her house. And I think that's also a piece of the sort of the esprit de corps uh, of this industry that we okay. have to extend from the rank and file, just average citizens through their political leaders because we do get pushback um, in Sacramento, we do get pushback um, because some folks just see this as a local LA issue. Right. They don't see the incentive as being important. Um, they don't see the economic benefit. And frankly, a lot of that gets driven from the left, not the right, right. Um, which, you know, as a Democrat, I find frustrating that we can't convince these folks that uh, economic development is a viable way to create more opportunity uh, to do more. Um, and I, I know agree. you I fight that battle. I, I, we fight that battle all the time, and I have to say, you know, to, that the uh, California Film Commission and Amy's, you know, work uh, through the state is uh, is wonderful. I mean, they they, they extend every uh, availability through the state to build build production to bring production here to here to, to California. Uh, we ran a program uh, at our local where we invited people to come out and to contact their friends and family throughout the state of California. We set up some computers so they could put in zip codes and find out who their representatives were in Sacramento. And we did a handwriting letter campaign where they actually hand wrote on the outside of the letters the, the names and the addresses and so on. And when those uh, representatives in Sacramento saw those zip codes and realized on that zip code, it said, wait a second, this is a constituent. Right. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. those envelopes got opened. And we encouraged them for community support across the Golden State, because it can't be just based in Los Angeles. Right. People all the way across the, the state have to, uh, have to respond and have to support the program. Right, absolutely. Well, I know just in my, you know, look, back when I was in, in the business, um, I shot in Mammoth, I shot in San Diego, I shot in San Francisco, and I shot in L.A., and I shot in a little town called San Juan Batista um, on an American Playhouse. So just in my limited experience, I was my introduction to the state of California. I got to see how beautiful and wonderful uh, the state is. Amy, going back to uh, um, the current program, this year there is no bill um, moving forward um, that the coalition is is backing and we're waiting to, to get the numbers to show again, make the case, is that the, is that the argument? That's right, there's no current <coughs> legislation that's moving in the 2013 session, but you know, it's a two year bill cycle, so right. I think we're gonna see something happening in 2014. In 2014, and so we wanna get some more uh, hard data to support um, the success of the program, is that the well, thinking? Well, it was also because last year in 2012, there was an extension to the program passed. Right, for one year, right? That was actually a two-year extension. Two-year extension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so we want to get more data. We want to make the case um, that this is a sound investment for the California economy, certainly wrapped in uh, the wonderful history of uh, our great state. Any last thoughts, Ed, you want to talk uh, to your uh, to your craft, I, to the folks? To uh, the actually, um, I think that, uh, it's again, I don't want to keep belabor the point, but I think that the value of understanding that this is not a Hollywood issue, that this is a California issue, that these are middle class jobs, and for those people that uh, know somebody who work in the industry, I'd like you to reach out to those people and ask, how can I help? Uh, what can I do? Uh, pick up the phone, write a letter to your legislators, hear your voice, get your voice heard up in Sacramento, that this is a viable program, and that it's important to the entire state's infrastructure and that we need to keep it here and we need to keep the jobs here and we need to stop the thievery of middle class jobs in the state of California. Right. Well, the question is film production in the golden state of California. Young people for decades have been coming here because it is the mecca of creative entertainment talent. Um, we're in danger of losing that. We are losing some of the infrastructure to other states but there are real efforts that need support. The California Film Commission is doing a terrific job. The tax incentives make money for the state of California. If you're talking to your legislator or talking to people out there, spread the word because California cannot cease to be the mecca it is. This is The Question Is with Anthony Portentino. Tune in next month. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.